All right, guys, so at this point in the course, we should already be a little bit familiar with machine learning, deep learning, the differences between those two, and also what we're going to be doing in this course. So in this video, we are going to set up our environment. And you're welcome to set up your environment however you want. You can use a text editor, you can use an IDE, whatever, just as long as you can run Python. But for this course, we're going to be using, and I highly recommend, a service called Google Colab. Now Google Colab is a notebook style, so if you've ever used Jupyter Notebook, it's pretty much exactly the same like that, except for it runs in your Google Drive on the cloud. So you can run everything on a cloud GPU, which is gonna be especially helpful if you don't have a very fast computer, or if you're like me and you're running a bunch of other programs on your current computer and you just wanna have your machine learning running on a cloud GPU, and plus it's all saved in Google Drive, so no matter where you go, you can just log into your drive and open up your Google Colab notebooks and start working from there. So that's why I like Google Colab and it's also all free. So let's just go over to Colab right now. Let's go hi to Colab. We're gonna go to colab.research.google.com and I am going to create a new Python 3 notebook and just show you guys a little bit how to use it. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna connect your GPU. So you can connect to a hosted runtime, which is gonna be the cloud GPU that Google offers for free, or you can connect to a local runtime, which would be the GPU that's on your computer. So I'm gonna go connect to a hosted runtime. You'll see here it's connecting, connected, and we can see we have our RAM and our disk space right here. Now Google Colab, because it's in the notebook style, everything is going to be run in cells. So basically what that means is that unlike uh, using an IDE or something where you run all of your code at the same time, you're gonna run your code in each individual cell. So for instance, if I say x equals five, and then I'm gonna do shift enter, that runs this cell right here and creates a new cell. And then I'll say print x, then I'll do shift enter to run it again. You'll see it prints out five. Now if I set X to eight and I don't enter run the cell and then I print X again, you'll see it still equals five. So what I have to do here is I have to shift enter on this and then shift enter on the second cell and you see that X will equal eight. So that's the notebook style. It may see, seem a bit inconvenient now but you'll realize later on it's especially helpful in machine learning because you can run specific parts of your code at different times and it just works a lot better because a lot of times you'll find that there's one part of your code that isn't working and let's say you don't want to retrain the model all over again instead of having to comment it out you can just run one part of your code at a time so that's why I like Colab. Uh, another thing is that you can add text to your Colab file. So since this is on Google Drive, you can share this with other people. And if you want to explain it, you can do all sorts of stuff here, add images, links, etc. So I can just say like test text. And this is the same thing as uh, commenting on something. Obviously too, you can comment regularly because the cells just run in Python. So we'll just say test comment and nothing's gonna run there. So that's the cool thing about Colab right there. Another thing is that if you go to this little side tab right here, you'll have a pane open, and you see here you can filter through code snippets. You can look through the table of contents on a notebook. So for instance, you can create a section. So this will say new section, and then you'll see it appear in the table of contents, and now when you click on new section, it will go to that section. So if you have a really long notebook, you can split it up between the different parts of your code, and it makes it really easy for people to see your code. Now another thing is that if you're working with files outside of your Colab document, you can go to files here and you see you can upload a file and then that'll upload a file from your desktop and then you'll be able to run it and use it in Colab or Google Colab also has some sample data. So we have the MNIST data set, which we'll talk about later and we'll actually be using. We also have a California housing prices data set and if we double click on that we can see a little bit about that 
And it's just a bunch of really cool, nice free data. Uh, if you click this button right here, you can mount your drive. So basically by mounting your drive, this creates a cell. I'll press the run button on this to run the cell. You'll see right here what it's asking me to do is run this URL in the browser. So I'll click it, click my Google account, click allow, and then I'll copy this right here, this little code. I'll paste it into here, run it, press enter, and you'll see once that's done running, what it's gonna do on the side, if I refresh, it's going to show my drive. So now I can import not just files that I upload to this Colab environment, and an important thing to note here is that whatever you upload here with this upload button is going to delete after your session is done. So if you want to have something, a file permanently stored so that you can come back later and keep editing on the Colab document, you might want to mount your drive because it will just save stuff that's in your Google Drive. So I can import any document that's in my Google Drive, which is really, really cool. But yeah, that's basically Colab for you guys. Uh, so get set up with that, and then the next video, we'll start working with linear regression. Sweet. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what we did in this video, please leave them down below. Now, if I could have just one more minute of your time, I would like to tell you about a service that I've been using for over a year now called Scribd. Now, just as a side note, Scribd did not sponsor me to make this video. I just wanted to tell you about it. Put simply, Scribd is a lot like Audible, except for instead of being $15 a month, it's only nine. And instead of only having two audiobooks per month, you get an unlimited access to a plethora of audiobooks, eBooks, documents, and even sheet music and magazines. So for me, this was obviously a no brainer. And right now, if you use the link in the description, you get 60 days free of Scribd and I get one month if you sign up using my link. So that's why Scribd didn't officially sponsor this video. I'm just telling you about it so that I can get some free months and I can continue learning and you can also continue learning with your 60 day free trial. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.